Hey everybody, Steve Hutchinson, and in this training video, I'm gonna walk you through the introduction and the first section of the Annuity Check Seminar. Now, a couple points I need to make. One, you need to be, if you're using the PowerPoint, you need to be on the latest version of uh, PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint, or Office 365. You need the latest graphics to take advantage of the animations that you're gonna see in here. Secondly, when you're using this PowerPoint, you need to give time for the slides that have the animations built in to kick in and work. If you press the buttons too fast and get too antsy, sometimes you'll miss some of the effects that are built into the process. So the first time you go through the PowerPoint, you wanna make sure you get plenty of time on each click so you can see if there happens to be any animations that might be um, assisting you there. So there's roughly 32 slides in this first section. And you can see I have the first slide up, but I'm kind of in um, note view here. All the notes on each slide are underneath the slide. If you um, click on the note view down here, so you can click on notes or you can close notes out. And so you can see my verbiage. What you wanna do is you wanna really get an idea for the concept I'm trying to get across for each slide. And there may be some keywords that I utilize that might be worth, or phrases that might be worth you learning word for word. But then other than that, um, if you have a way of saying something that's a little bit different than me, your way is always gonna be better because it's your brain uh, processing and, and uh, delivering that information in a way that's comfortable for you that fits your personality. So the, the notes are a guideline. This doesn't have to be a word for word scenario. We're not gonna be covering any concepts in here that aren't concepts that you aren't already familiar with, but we are gonna be covering them in a unique way that's been proven over the last 18 months to generate results and create a, an emotional crowd, at least individually at each table, you're gonna generate some emotion there. And so let's go ahead and, and walk through this. As I go through these first 32 slide sections for this part, I may be stopping periodically and explaining a little bit about the psychology behind uh, what it is that I'm talking to the audience about. Okay, before I actually get into the content of the seminar, I do want to mention something about attitude, um, your approach, your mental approach to the audience that you're working with. And I position this as an educational series, and my attitude during workshops, during appointments, one-on-one, -on -one, in any particular scenario, I'm looking to solve problems and I'm looking to increase awareness. My total focus on this audience isn't in who am I going to sell. My total focus is on them understanding fees, understanding volatility, understanding income riders, and understanding that there's a way that they can maximize their income if they have the opportunity to meet with me and I can take them to a higher level. So you're, you're always coming from a position uh, providing something just a little bit different and a little bit special, and you're in for something special tonight. And so I'm going to go ahead and open this into presentation mode and go ahead and start the, uh, the workshop. So hey folks, thank you for being here tonight. I'm really excited about tonight because we're kind of using a little bit of a different format. Um, as you can see, this is an education series. And what I'd like you to know about this program tonight is that this was originally designed to educate advisors and agents across the United States on some of the topics that we're gonna be covering tonight. So you need to have your, your pen and your pencil and be really on top of this because it could be getting um, a little bit deep in a couple of these subjects, but it's been designed in a way that I think you're gonna really um, get a tremendous amount of information out of it and understand it. Also, at the break for dinner, I'm gonna hand everybody out a workbook um, that's gonna help reinforce some of the concepts we're talking about here. So even if you don't remember 100% of each of the main concepts that we're going through, I think you're gonna have a, a, a better feel for exactly what's going on and what your options are when it comes to annuities and your IRAs and generating um, income for yourself. So specifically, tonight you're gonna to learn four ways to increase annuity income we're gonna talk about something called the power of zero. And then lastly, after dinner, we're gonna show you a way that you can increase your income up to 40%. So this is gonna be a lot of exciting material tonight. If you have questions, 
Uh, there's, at periodic points, I'm going to stop and give you a chance to catch up with me with questions. If you could just kind of make a note of your question until we get to those points, it'll help us stay on, basically stay on course so everybody can get dinner on time while it's really nice and hot. All right, four ways to increase annuity income. Specifically, we're going to talk about reducing fees and charges, eliminating volatility, and why the power of zero is so important, avoiding income riders, and then lastly, we're going to talk about a strategy, once again, on how to maximize withdrawals. So this will all make sense as we cover these sections in the, uh, in the proper order. So let's go ahead and jump in here with reducing fees and charges. And in this section, you're going to learn when 1% cost you 21%. All right, I'm going to pause here for a second and talk to you, the agents, on the, on the training. This section is probably the most important section because this truly establishes your authority because if you carefully master the fees and charges section, you will have a command over these people and a respect, and people will come up to you after the workshop. They'll say, wow, I can't believe what I learned at this thing, and we really want to, you know, we got a couple of these. We really need to check them out to see just basically how we're sitting. So this is where you can really establish your authority. So let's go ahead and, and uh, move forward with this. So when 1% costs you 21%, most people have a perception that a 1% fee is just a small cut of the overall pie. Well, what I want to do tonight is I really want to challenge this mathematically. And so we're going to bring in our own hypothetical character for tonight and his name is Joe. And so hypothetically, let's go ahead and put this assumption to the, um, basically to the challenge. So Joe accumulates $200,000 through age 65 by just basically saving his money. At age 65, he takes his principal amount of 200,000 and he goes down to a local advisory firm or an investment bank and he deposits his $200,000 or invests it. So he's now 65, as you can see over here on the left. What we're going to do is we're going to follow Joe all the way through age 90, and he's going to stay invested that entire time. And just to keep it simple with the math, we're going to assume that Joe stays invested. And secondly, he doesn't take any withdrawals. And we're also going to assume that his account grows at 5% compounded annually, resulting in his 413000 666 of growth combined with his $200,000. Um, he's got $613, $666 total account there at age 90. Now, he had some help from the advisory firm, so Joe agreed to pay a 1% annual fee. And before I do the math on this 1% annual fee, and I'm going to refer to everybody every once in a while in here as class, but class, do you think that 1% fee is on the growth part, the 413 that grew, or do you think his 1% fee is going to be charged on the entire account? All right, now I'm going to pause here for a second, talking to you again um, as the agent. The entire group is going to say it's on the whole account, not just the growth, because everybody that has an account um, invested anywhere automatically knows that fees are charged on the entire account. So I want them to say that because I'm going to make distinctions later on. So let's go ahead with the next slide. So you click the next slide. Okay, what we need to know is as Joe's account grows, so does his 1% fee. So if we follow up from age 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, that 1% fee compounds all the way up to $86,870. So we need to reduce that from Joe's $413,000 growth. And so we're gonna go ahead and add in that 86,870, which takes him down to 326,796 plus the 200 is $526,000. Now I'm gonna stop here again for a second. You wanna inject early on this $526,000 because as we get to the end of the fee section, we're gonna come back around and you need to be comfortable with these numbers. So if there's some numbers for you to just hard memorize, uh, the 413,666, 86,870 in fees, the 326,796, and of course the 200 that we started with. 
because you're going to be using those numbers quite a bit. And so if you have to stop and think or turn around and read those numbers, it's going to slow you down. So let's go ahead and move forward with the 86,870. All right, so now let's take a step back and look at the total growth again, the 413,666. And if we look at that, out of that growth, we had 86,870 of that went to fees, leaving Joe 326,796 dollars. But here's what's amazing. If we look at the fees, this 86,870 as a percentage of the growth which the fees were paid to generate, we find that 21% of the total growth was consumed by fees. So fees as a percentage of growth was 21%. But Joe just didn't lose 21% of his growth. He also lost the opportunity to earn money on the dollars he paid in fees. All right, we're going to stop here for a second. So what we're doing is we're setting up something called lost opportunity cost. So he lost the opportunity to earn money on the dollars he paid in fees. And, and so you, you're going to hit on this in a couple different ways throughout the workshop. But the basic idea is if I pay $1,000 in fees, do I ever get any use of that $1,000 again for the rest of my life? And the answer is no. Now I'm talking to you, the advisor. So we're setting this up. He lost the 21% um, of his growth to fees, but he also lost the opportunity cost. So this next slide is going to build on the fees and show how much interest he lost at 5% had that money continued compounding without the fee. And so the next slide. Okay, so economists call this lost opportunity cost. And so you can see that at age 70, we only have about $1,147 interest that his fees would have earned had they been earning 5%. But as we go along, this number starts to accelerate, 59.96, and at 63,605. So in other words, the $86,000 of fees that he paid right here through age 90 would have generated another 63,000. 605 in gains for Joe had he kept that money inside of his account. So factoring the lost opportunity cost into his fees, Joe lost over $150,000 to a 1% fee. So once again, that's the 63,000 plus the $86,000. And that's how we get to the $150,000. So now we have to uh, factor in that we had $150,000. So had Joe not paid that fee, instead of having $526,796, he would have had the full growth plus the lost opportunity cost he would have captured. He would have $677,271. Once again, Joe would have put the $150,000 into his pocket. Okay, so stop. Here, again, once... Here we are truly making a huge difference for this audience. They've seen all kinds of generic tax deferred and everything else in workshops, social security workshops, all this. All of a sudden you're giving them information about something that's probably attached to a lot of their annuities in this, um, you know, in this meeting room and you're giving them information they've never even thought of and a whole new paradigm about how to think about these fees. So where are these fees? So you have advisor fees, expense ratio, wrap fees, transaction costs, deferred sales. I could go for several pages on the fees. Some of the advantages for reducing your fees is first it's going to allow for greater gains during the good years. It's going to protect your principal during flat or down years. And as we've been talking about with the lost opportunity costs, you earn more money on the money that didn't go to fees. So let's take a look at some of these fees by annuity type. Starting with the fixed annuity, basically a fixed annuity works similar to a CD. It protects your principal, um, but you have a level fixed return, sometimes 
two, three, four percent depends on the environment. And there's no fees or riders attached to just generic fixed annuities. You also have fixed index annuities. Now we're going to take a deep dive on some of these fixed index annuities later on in the workshop. But right now, what you kind of have to watch for, um, in addition to rider charges, is something called caps. And also you have to be aware of participation rates. These aren't fees, but in a lot of instances, they can have a similar effect. So we'll talk about those. Lastly, we have variable annuities. Variable annuities are invested in the stock market, so your principal is still at risk, and variable annuities tend to have more fees than other contracts. In fact, they have fees ranging from 2 to 4%. Now, how many of you have heard of Morningstar? Okay, well, Morningstar, according to them, the average variable annuity has mortality and expense charges of about 1.25%. Now, the fees that we're talking about here, other than the last one, are fees that don't show up on your statement. They're actually in the contract. So you have to know where to find these fees. Administrative charges on average, according to Morningstar, can average another 0.28%. Now, that's not very much, but guess which fee it's added to? You got it, the mortality and expense charge. Then there's something called expense ratio fees. Expense ratio fees average almost another full percent. These basically work like mutual fund fees that are charged for the management of those sub accounts. So the average fees that we're talking about between the M&E admin and expense ratio, according to Morningstar, average about 2.5%. And that's before you throw in potential income riders or death benefit riders. All right, stop. So you want to take your time going through this. You want to establish the fact that these are fees that aren't part of the normal statement that you get. And you're starting to create curiosity about, well, where do I find these fees? I wonder how much fees we're paying here. And then I'm going to do something with the income riders. I'm not going to go into the specific amount or how they work, but I'm going to tie in my best buy analogy here. So I'm going to give you the best buy story. And you have to use your own I, you know, I talk a lot with my hands and make a lot of gestures and, and walk around a lot in the room and I physically act like I'm walking down the aisle at Best Buy. But you're trying to set and establish a point here. And we're also going to ask a couple questions that we already know how the audience is going to answer. And we're going to benefit from that answer. And it's essentially a tie down for you in the seminar. So at each point, each one of these sections, you're making basically closing remarks and questions that basically ratchet this whole group a little bit closer towards wanting to have an appointment with you. So you don't just close at the appointment or after the second appointment, you're closing from the, the minute the seminar starts all the way through to the end till they become your client. All right, so income writer. So now I'm gonna go back to talking to the audience. Hey, how many have you have ever been to maybe Best Buy or, or purchase anything at a, at a big box store like that? And I. Uh, now, wave my hand with the audience. I want to make sure everybody sees my hand moving around and get everybody comfortable. Yeah, 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 I've been there. Okay. So, all right. So, you walk into Best Buy, and let's say you walk down the aisle and you decide to purchase a DVD player or something for somebody. So, you go down to the aisle and you reach over and you grab the DVD player. You take it up to the cash register and you start to cash out. What is something that they always try to sell you at the register? besides the DVD player when you're trying to cash out. Okay, okay, we're gonna stop here for a second. So obviously everybody in the audience is gonna say extended warranty or something to that effect and say that's right. So you wanna confirm, say that's right. Um, so let me ask you a question. Is that a good deal for you or for Best Buy? And I shut up and I let them answer at that point. Everybody's gonna in unison say Best Buy and say, that's right, it's almost 99% profit for Best Buy, which is why they try to sell it to you at the cash register when you check out. So there's a lot of positive benefits to an annuity and some of the things it can do for you, but I want you to start thinking critically, and we're gonna get into these income riders a little bit more in the next section, but I want you to start thinking as critically about a rider that's attached to your contract I want you to think as critically about these riders as you would buying an extended warranty for that DVD player when you check out at Best Buy.
So just think about it with Joe. Joe took 100% of the risk, 100% of the effort, and got 79% of the gain. We call this death by a thousand cuts. According to AARP, eight out of 10 people don't have any idea how much they're paying in fees. So don't feel like the long ranger if, if you don't have an idea. So how can you find out exactly how much you're paying in fees? Later on, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk more about this software that we utilize, but we actually have software that can calculate and we can run a report. It has several thousand of these contracts, including yours, built into the software. We simply plug in some simple information from your latest statement and it'll calculate what you've paid in fees, how much you've made, what your rate of return has been since the inception of this contract, and then we can give you that ratio where you know what percentage of your fees went to growth or what percentage of your growth went to fees, fees as a percentage of growth. Okay, so in the next section and on the next video, we're gonna go into eliminate volatility, but that pretty much covers all those first 32 slides. I may have paused a couple times there. You have to kind of go through it a couple times to make sure that uh, you have your verbiage lined up with the slides. But those are the points that you're trying to get across. If you do this properly, you've already set yourself apart from 99% of the seminars that these people have ever seen in their lifetime because people have absolutely no idea that a 1% fee on 200 grand between the fees and lost opportunity costs could chew up as much as $150,000. So now you have everybody's attention, everybody's sitting up on the edge of their chair, taking some notes, and people are starting to break those pinky swears that they made of each other when they walked in, saying, you know, we're gonna go enjoy dinner, but uh, we're not gonna set up a meeting. Those pinky swears are now starting um, to loosen. So we'll see you in the next video.